Austin W. Granville was a UK-born American writer and co-inventor of a modified version of a typewriter. Born in 1854 in Greater London, the son of Augustus Granville and Helen Reid, he was supposedly a cousin of H.R. Haggard. Contemporary reviewers noted Granville lived in Melbourne in the 1890s. At some point he married Louise Nelson Granville. He would later move to Chicago and would write boys fiction as Jack Talbot. In 1894 he and Chicago-based pulp fiction writer William Wilson Knott wrote If the Devil Came to Chicago as a response to W.T. Stead's If Christ Came to Chicago. He worked on typewriter designs with married Henry Dement and registered a typewriter patent, U.S. Patent 307445, in 1884. He died in 1922. His published works consist of the 1891 The Shadow of Shame, described as a typical French fable full of intrigue, The Legend of Cara or the Tale of the Five Knights, an Eastern Romance, which is only mentioned in two fiction catalogues as a poem, and today's subject, the 1894 The Fallen Race. The story begins in 1888, with a newspaper magnate listening all night to the astonishing narrative of Dr. Paul Gifford, the only survivor of the 1874 expedition into the heartland of Australia, which set out under the command of George H. Frisbee, late of the Colonial Navy. The expedition soon runs out of water, and Captain Frisbee leaves Gifford in charge of the weak members of his party going to try and find some, but all the men who leave with Frisbee are never seen again. Paul and his Aboriginal servant Jackie Jackie are the only survivors at camp, but after wandering the desert they have other company, specifically a group of weird, furry, ball-shaped animals who surround their fireplace and speak in an Aboriginal dialect. After a scuffle, Jackie Jackie tells Gifford that these beings are half-human, half-kangaroo hybrids of the Asolulu tribe, whose men were slaughtered and whose women were used for breeding by kangaroos. But just then a huge army of these circular beings roll up and demand they surrender to be brought before their white queen. Brought to a distant island, Gifford meets the human white queen of these beings, the Anonos, who is named Azuela and is wholly ignorant of her human origin. She was found by the Anono as a babe in the desert before she was eventually made their queen. Dutifully served by Hoho, her discoverer and the son of the former king, Gifford begins to educate her in matters of civilization and technology, also teaching her to read from the old family bible found with her dead mother. But an attempt to make a crudely fashioned furnace, which seems to fail, angers the population, who already do not like Paul, the self-styled fire god, for having forbidden them to engage in cannibalism. In the end, the revolt is put down by the smelting being a success, and Paul begins his plan to improve and civilize a known society. Thankfully, the novel does not descend into utopian boredom. We have a battle against a tribe of aborigines to recover the abducted Azuela, whose chief Walla Walla wants her for his wife. However, it is a bit too brief, with Walla Walla only showing up in one short scene and then dying. And then we have a story of jealousy, an Anono female being in love with Paul, and a conspiracy that almost kills both Paul and Azuela, but is solved by blowing up a large chunk of the population with explosives. The chief fault of the novel is it does little with the Anono being ball-shaped half-kangaroo people, and with their not illustrations and occasional mentions of them rolling around and slamming into things, one could easily forget. Their society is also very much not developed before Paul shows up, and they immediately adopt British culture and institutions of public drunkenness and dandyism, which is a bit disappointing. 